Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Logan Zilmer. And you'll see in Photopia, I have already opened up a square project by going to File and New and going to Print an A4 and making sure that my width and my height are both the same size, pressing Enter and then clicking on Create. And uh, that gives me a new square project to work on. I've also found a nice picture of a snowy landscape that I'm going to use and I'm going to use the rectangle select tool and the shift key just to draw a square over that piece before pressing control C to copy and control V to paste it into my project. I'm then using the arrow tool just to resize that piece over the whole of my project making sure I press shift to make sure it doesn't stretch or squish. And I'm just going to make that layer invisible for the time being, because I don't need it just yet. And I'm gonna to go to this picture of curtains that I've got from the internet. And I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool to cut round that curtain, but I'm not going to make you wait while I do that. I've already done that. So I went round it with the polygonal lasso tool and I now have it on its own so I can use the rectangle select tool and select it, press control C, go back to my project and press control V to paste that in. Okay, and then same as with the snowy landscape, I'm just using the arrow tool to resize that. And now I need to start changing it to look like I need it. So I'm gonna go edit, transform, distort and I'm just going to use the handles at the top just to squeeze in the top so it's closer together. You don't want to go right together because you'll notice that at the bottom, as I push it together, it kind of stretches the bottom upwards and I don't want too much of that distortion at the bottom. So I'm just gonna go as far as I can to putting the top together like that. Okay, right, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to use the warp tool. So I'm just going to use the rectangle select to select the whole of my curtain again. And then I'm gonna go edit, transform and warp. And that's gonna give me all these different handles to be able to move the curtain and warp it in this instance so that the top of the curtain is up to a point and I'm trying to make it look like the curtain is coming open. So I'm just warping the tool so that the point is over to the left at the top. And then we've got this kind of um, curve making it look like the curtain's being opened. Okay. And then I'm going to use filter and liquify to add to that effect. So what I can do is grab the size and make sure it's nice and big and this allows me as you can see to kind of move and warp the curtain into the shape that I want it to be. So essentially I'm trying to get it to look like the curtain is being pushed open by somebody. So I'm stretching out the bottom and just letting the kind of middle look like somebody's hand is pushing it over to the side. As we go through, you'll see what I mean. But essentially, it's a case of using this liquify tool just to shape the curtains however you want them, okay? And you can use different sizes. You'll see I'm using a smaller brush size now just to make sure I've got the fine detail. And once you're happy with it, then you can duplicate it. So I'm gonna right click and duplicate layer. And then on that new layer, I'm gonna go edit, transform, flip horizontally. And that's gonna give me an, another version of it the other way around. And then I'm gonna move it over so that it looks like my curtains are together at the top and being pulled apart. Okay, you want the bottom bits to touch as well because you want there to be a middle okay and I'm just using the warp tool again so edit transform warp 
and I'm just pulling this side down a bit so they're not quite so obviously the same. You don't need to worry too much on this left hand side the curtain is going to be covered by the person that's opening the curtains but it's good to make them look a bit different so people don't just see you're repeating the same thing over and over. Okay, right, once I'm happy with those I can now bring back my snowy landscape so I can see those curtains within it and I'm just grabbing both layers and the arrow tool just to move them to where I want them for now. Okay, and I'm just going to grab one of the curtains and I want to put some darkness at the top of it, uh, inspired by the artist's work. So I'm just going to use the gradient tool to do that. Okay, I'm going to magic wand the whole of the background around the curtain on that layer. And I'm going to go to select and inverse, and that's going to select just the curtain. So I want that selected. I'm then going to go to the gradient tool and making sure that my color picker is on black and white colors. I'm going to choose the black to transparent. And that's then going to allow me to drag over the top of the curtain and just get that darkness blending out to light. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other curtain. So magic wand the background around it and then select an inverse. So I've selected the curtain and then use the gradient tool again to drag from dark to light on that curtain. Okay, I can now grab both the curtain layers so that I can then right click and merge layers and I've got both the curtains on the same layer now. And I'm gonna to go to the drop down menu just above them and I'm gonna choose hard light and that's gonna make them transparent so they blend into the background a bit. But they need some work so I'm gonna go edit adjustments black and white to make them black and white. And then I go image adjustments, brightness and contrast. And I'm just gonna bring the brightness down and the contrast up. And that's gonna help them stand out, but not too much on the background, okay? Obviously you'll need to adjust this based on your image. But once you're happy, you should be able to see the curtains with the scenery behind them, okay? Right, now, inspired by the artists, I'm going to be selecting a nice hot landscape to see through the curtain. Um, so I'm going to just quickly change up the sky. I love the desert on this one, the nice oranges, but the sky is a bit pale. So I'm gonna go image adjustments, color balance, and I'm just gonna bring up the blue. Just gonna move that so you can see. Bring up the blue, click okay. And then I'm gonna go image adjustments, hue saturation and I'm going to bring up the saturation so it's nice and colorful in the sky okay maybe bring down the brightness a bit okay right once you're happy with that or you may even find a picture that you don't have to adapt in any way but now I'm happy with this bit I'm going to select this area press ctrl c to copy it and then ctrl v to paste it into my project and I'm just going to resize it so that it fits the curtain hole, if you will, the area that is able to be seen through the two curtains. And I usually wouldn't warp um, or squish a picture, but in this case it's quite a basic landscape, so I've just squished it a bit to fit more nicely. Okay, and what I'm going to do, making sure I'm on my curtains layer, I'm going to mask off with the magic wand tool that area in the middle. I'm then going to go back to my landscape layer, go select inverse, so it selects everything around that hole, and then press delete, and it deletes that everything else. So you're left with just what's inside the hole. Okay, so that's my landscape looking through the curtains. And now just to make the effect a little bit more prominent. I'm going to go image adjustments, brightness, contrast on my snowy landscape layer. And I'm just going to bring down the contrast and the brightness so that the landscape looks that little bit more dramatic. Actually bring the contrast back up. Okay, happy with that. Looking nice. But I think maybe it could be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go image adjustments, hue saturation. I'm just going to use the lightness 
slider and just slide down the lightness so that it looks like it's kind of a bit darker, a bit more like nighttime setting in. Okay, now it's time to add the last element, which is my person holding open the curtain. And I have taken a photograph of one of my colleagues um, in the pose that I need him to be in. And I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool to cut round him um, to be able to cut him out. And I've already done that, so you didn't need to watch me do it. Okay, and so I'm going to use the rectangle select tool just to grab him, press Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste him in. He's a bit bigger than the image, so I'm just going to move him to the top. And using the Shift key to make sure he doesn't stretch and squish, I'm just going to use the arrow tool to resize him, just rotating him a bit so it looks like he's leaning over into the curtain so he's looking through okay and it's at this point you might want to just adjust everything the curtains the hole and your person just to better pose them so i don't want his feet to be quite so near to the bottom of the frame so that's good so i've just moved them up and then it's a case of just messing with the colors to make him fit a bit better. So image adjustments, hue, saturation. And I'm just gonna bring the saturation down a little and the lightness down a little, just to make him look a little bit more like he's in the dark landscape. And then I'm gonna go image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and play with those a little bit more, just to, again, make him fit with that kind of darker, snowy landscape. And the last thing I'm going to do is just make it look like he's standing on the snow. But if I was to put a drop shadow on the whole of him, it would have a drop shadow on his whole body and underneath his arm. So what I'm going to do is get the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm just going to cut the bottoms of his feet out separately with the tool just to mask them off. Okay, and then I'm going to press Control C and then Control V, and that's got them onto their own layer. And then I can double click on that layer and I can go to Drop Shadow and I can change the angle and the opacity and the distance to whatever I want them to be to make it look like the shadow is just underneath his feet to make him look like he's standing on the snow. Okay. Right, my piece of work is almost finished, but I'd like to make it a little bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna to go to the landscape layer and I'm gonna double click and then I'm gonna choose inner glow and I'm gonna make sure I've got normal and black in the color picker. And I'm going to make the size massive, in fact, even more than the slider will allow, about 600, I think. Yeah, it's looking good. And then I'm going to bring the opacity right the way down. Well, not all the way down, but down more, so it's a little bit more of a subtle effect. So I really want that kind of darkness creeping in from the sides of the piece of work. Okay. That's looking good. I click OK. And that's just given my piece that little bit more drama and made the uh, curtains stand out and the view through the curtains more bold. OK, and that is this piece done and dusted. I hope you find this tutorial helpful.